All right. Welcome to today's webinar. Today, we're going to discuss the Harvard Chan Sea Change Youth Summit, which will be held this summer in Boston, Mass. Uh, my name is Julian, and I'm a program director here at Putney Student Travel. We collaborate with the Harvard Chan Sea Change uh, Department to organize this program each year. So this webinar will probably take about 30 minutes or so. Um, at any point, you can drop questions in the question in the Q&A. And just so you know, the webinar is being recorded, and we will have it on our website um, at a later date. First, we're going to hear from Governor Peter Shumlin, who will tell us a bit about how this program started and why the time for action is now. We're also going to hear from uh, my colleague Sky Flanagan, who's a program director at Harvard Chan Sea Change. She'll give you an overview of the center, some of the highlights from last year, and um, some visions for this coming summer. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the application process and scholarships. And we're also going to be joined today by my colleague John, who will be helping with the Q&A. And we'll leave some time at the end for any questions that come up. Um, so thank you so much for being here. And I'm going to pass this over to my colleague, Peter Shumlin, to introduce the program. Thank you, Julian. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'll be brief because I get to introduce Sky Flanagan from Harvard Sea Change. But I just want to, first of all, welcome you and then give you a little bit about the history of this program, why we feel so uh, passionately about this program. and why we think it makes a difference. So just to take you back historically about how Putney and Harvard came together, Sea Change, uh, to develop this program. When I was running for governor, uh, just historically, that's the same time when Obama was running for president against John McCain, to put it in historical uh, perspective. As you can see, I looked a lot younger there, and that's true. Um, you remember, there was the height of the recession. and worldwide recession. Everybody running for office in those days, didn't matter what party was talking about jobs, jobs creation, economic development. And uh, I ran on a platform that included energy independence. And basically what I told the monitors is, listen, if you elect me, among other things in the platform that we don't have time to get into now, I said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to shut down the old aging leaking nuclear power plant that powered much of Vermont. And we're going to do three things. We're going to build out renewables like you've never seen before, because I believe that importing oil and coal is more expensive than developing our energy right here. Uh, I said, second, we're going to create jobs when we do that, because whenever you transform an economy from one form of doing things to another, you create thousands and thousands of jobs. And I said, third, we're going to put money in Vermonters' pockets, because I believe that it's cheaper to produce our own energy through renewable energy than it is to import uh, oil and coal, mostly from countries that don't like us. And finally, that will make a difference in reducing our carbon footprint. And this little state can show folks how a little state with the right policies can make a difference. Anyway, we're on Vermont talking about those issues in Vermont, we're a small state, so gubernatorial candidates are out there meeting people all the time. Uh, I won that election. And uh, the first thing that I did was sign a bill. I think it's in the slide that we just skipped. If you back up one, there you go. I was signing a bill. That's the first bill I signed that basically implemented the energy policies that I had made while I ran for governor. It made it possible to implement policy that we don't have time to get into here. But just fast forward, I served three terms. I didn't run for a fourth. But if you go to the next slide, you'll see that when I was done, when we were done, uh, Vermont was ranked the number one solar state in America by the Union of Concerned Scientists. And when you think about Vermont, you don't think about, wow, that's a sunny place with lots of warm weather, obviously. You know, we're a ski state. Think Ben and Jerry's ice cream, maple syrup, snow. Uh, the second thing that we were proud of is for four of the six years that I was governor, our rates went down. Power rates went down. You'd get your bill in the mail, it would be lower than the month before. Now, a good statistician would say, yeah, don't listen to that guy. He's a politician. All the states around him went down, too. That's not true. New Hampshire to our east went up 100% in some cases of their utilities. New York saw huge increases. Connecticut to our south and Massachusetts were all seeing increases. So it was an unusual aberration. We did put money in Vermonter's pockets. Third, we created jobs. When I finished my three terms, one of 17 Vermonters was working in a renewable energy business. And fourth, we grew solar by 22 times. Think about that, that's huge in three terms. And we, I'm sorry, wind by 22 times, solar by 11 times. And we moved our state towards 
this goal of 90% renewable by 2050. So if you click the next slide, I'm only telling you that because this is an issue that I felt passionately about. I worked very closely at that time with Gina McCarthy. Gina was Obama's uh, administrator of the EPA. Uh, she comes from Boston, South Boston, I should say. Uh, and when I, uh, and she was one of the people that I worked very closely with on energy issues, on helping to clean up Lake Champlain, which is our big lake here. We call it a Great Lake, even though it's not technically a Great Lake. Uh, and we became very good friends. Well, just by pure coincidence, uh, I was a fellow at the Kennedy School and the School of Public Health doing some teaching. And I get there and there's my friend, Jeannie McCarthy, who was running sea change at that time. That's before President Biden brought her back to Washington to head up his climate change efforts. And we were talking one, one day and Gina said, you know, all the action is coming from high school students. Show us the next slide. Uh, that was the time just historically when Greta was coming across by, if you just flick the next slide, yeah, there you go. Greta was coming across to speak to the UN and uh, speak passionately against you know, the Trump administration that had first action was to get out of the Paris Climate Accord. Uh, and all, thing, all this energy was coming from high school students all over the country. And Gina said, we've got to get to those kids. We've got to get them engaged. They're engaged. They just need the resources. They were doing uh, Friday strikes at that time, walking out of school on Friday across the country. And she said, they know that walking out of school on Friday isn't going to save the planet. But what they need is the resources, the knowledge to really be able to take their passion and turn it into action, not only today back in their communities, but as they get an education into their futures. She said, Peter, don't you do high school kids when you're not, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, Putney was founded by my parents 73 years ago. We've done summer education ever since. And she sort of said, well, listen, we're gonna do the policy. We've got the people here at Harvard for students that are passionate about activism or passionate about entrepreneurship and the extraordinary opportunities in transforming to the way we do power. People who are interested in health and public health and how climate change is gonna be the biggest challenge for public health and for healthcare in human history. And we just want to give a whole list. She said, we'll do the curriculum you manage the high school students, this is gonna be a powerful summit that we're gonna create. We've been doing it ever since. So I credit Gina McCarthy, her passion, her vision for this program. I think it's extremely unusual in respect that Sea Change's mission is at Harvard to coalesce their resources to make a difference. And this is where how they reach out to high school students to get them engaged, to get them the curriculum, the knowledge, the exposure to people, that no one else can get and turn it into action and part of their future going forward. So I'm super passionate about this program. I'm delighted to introduce Sky Flanagan, who's the has, has for a long time now been the program director of Sea Change at Harvard and uh, a great friend, a great colleague. She's very active in, uh, active in the program itself and helping make it happen. You'll get to know her well if you apply and are accepted. And all I can say is, Putney was founded 73 years ago by my parents who had an educational vision to turn summer into summer education. Sea Change is one of our most exciting partners in actually helping to save the planet at a time when we're running out of time, when we know that the effects of climate change are already affecting us in ways that are immeasurable and difficult, but a solvable problem and the solutions are in Part of this summit. So, Sky, thank you for uh, being a part of this. I'm delighted to turn over to you. And thank I'll click off. I'll click off to the question and answer. Thank you, Governor Shumlin, and thank you all for joining us today um, to talk about our Youth Summit, which is one of our favorite programs that we run here at the Center for Climate Health and the Global Environment. Um, to give you a little context about our center. Uh, we are housed within the Harvard School of Public Health, um, and we have been uh, at it for a quite some while, uh, quite a while. Uh, the center has been around for uh, over 25 years, and our mission is really to help translate the innovative climate science happening from across Harvard and make sure to increase the public's awareness of the health impacts of climate change so people understand that it's personal, it's urgent, and it's actionable. And our work is broken up into sort of three different buckets. Um, one is producing new knowledge. So we do a ton of research on 
uh, a variety of different things. Uh, Dr. Shumlin or Governor Shumlin uh, mentioned some of our connection with the medical school. Uh, we, we work really closely with uh, them as well as uh, others on research um, from across the health sciences schools and all the hospitals. Uh, we also work really closely on uh, informing policy and practice. So all of the research we're doing, we want to translate it and make sure that it is making a change um, and it is impacting policy. And then finally, uh, preparing the next generation of, of leaders. So that work um, encompasses working with our own students, uh, running fellowships uh, for practicing clinicians and beyond, um, as well as our work with high school students. Um, and that's the bucket that I'm talking about today. And one of our programs that we've been running in collaboration with Putney Student Travel for um, three years now. So this will be our fourth year. Um, so just a little bit more about our center. Um, as I mentioned, uh, well, actually, I guess I didn't introduce myself. My name is Sky Flanagan. Um, I'm the director of programs at the at Sea Change. Um, I listed a couple of our uh, leadership members on this slide. Currently, we have an interim director, uh, Kari Nadeau. She is a practicing pediatrician and one of the most uh, foremost experts on asthma and allergy in the world. And she's amazing. She's also the chair of our environmental health department. And she will be speaking this summer. Uh, she's fantastic. She's a strong leader in this space. Uh, we also have Dr. Gora Basu, who is an MD and a primary care doctor, um, works uh, really closely on health equity issues. And Caleb Dresser, uh, who's the, our director of healthcare solutions, does, leads up a lot of our research um, and is an emergency medica, medical doctor at the med school. So as you can see, we've got a theme where we're at the School of Public Health, but we have this very strong connection to the medical school um, and the hospitals because we recognize that uh, climate is going to be impacting public health um, and the doctors are the ones that are going to be taking care of us. So we need to work really closely with that part of the uh, university as well. Uh, you have the next slide, Julian. Formerly, uh, we have had we had Dr. Ari Bernstein as our director. He is currently now he is at the center, the National Center for Environmental Health and Agency for Toxic Substance Substances and Disease Registry. That's a mouthful. Um, but he's really he has been a fantastic advocate of the program and is an example of some of the speakers that we have um, from year to year. Uh, we previously uh, have had Gina McCarthy, who Dr. Or Peter Shumlin uh, mentioned. Um, and then I wanted to run through some of the other types of speakers that we offer up at our program. So um, the way I like to think about it is, you know, it's a one week long conference for high school students uh, where they have programming built out throughout their day. Um, and every day they hear from a variety of speakers, depending on what their interests are. Um, so I wanted to give you a little sampling of some of the types of speakers we've had in the past and some of them you, we may be welcoming back this summer, um, but just, just give you a little bit of a, a taste for the type of talent that we recruit for this program. Uh, Howard Coe, he was the former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Health during the Obama administration, and he's currently a professor of practice um, and leadership at the School of Public Health, one of the foremost experts in the world. Um, on policy and health. Francesca Dominici is a professor of biostats, also the co-director of the data science initiative at Harvard. She's rated one of the highest cited uh, researchers in her field, top 1%. Um, and she's one of our uh, guest speakers at, the pro at our summer program. We also have folks like Marcia Castro, who is the chair of our global health department um, at the school. And she's one of, an, uh, one of the foremost experts on infectious diseases and climate change. Does a lot of really fascinating research in Brazil um, and in the Amazon. Uh, so lots of a wealth of knowledge from her and her team that they bring to the summit. And then we tried to pepper in a number of other um, outside speakers, um, aside from our Harvard folks, that are really leading um, voices in climate change or have some sort of connection that brings a lot to the table. So Wawa Gathru was with us last summer. Um, she's a youth activist, a climate storyteller, and she is the founder of Black Girl Environmentalist. She uses social media to educate on climate and equity issues, and she's currently sitting on the first ever Na uh, National Environmental Youth Advisory Council for the EPA. 
Um, she was featured on the on the cover of Vogue with Billie Eilish and seven other climate creators um, in 2023. So she's a total rock star and she was uh, able to join us last summer and we'll have someone similar this summer. Uh, we also get to hear from awesome politicians that have um, you know, some sort of experience. And Jeff Sanchez is a former Massachusetts House representative, and he represents, ha formerly represented the district that the School of Public Health actually sits in. So he gives us a really interesting perspective of how um, big institutions and policies have played into the local community where we will be hosting our program. Um, and then we have awesome uh, other speakers like Tevin Wooten, who is a broadcast meteorologist at NBC Boston. Um, and brings a lot of that perspective of, of what, it, what it feels like to be in front of the camera. So for the next slide, um, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about some of the types of instructors we have, and I'm actually gonna pass it back to my colleague, Julian, to take, to take it from here. Thanks, Guy. So every summer, Putney hires a, a group of incredible instructors to come to Boston and be the uh, lead these action focus groups, we call them, which are small seminar groups focused on a one of the topics connected to the theme of uh, climate, health, and equity. So our instructors are passionate educators. They take time away from their busy professions every summer because they love working with high school students and sharing their knowledge. They're really involved um, in, in all aspects of the program. Um, the whole day, they're, you know, they're teaching a seminar, they're facilitating a talk with one of the guest speakers that Sky just mentioned. Um, and then they're also taking students out on field trips and being mentors and coaches to them. Um, so they're an incredible collection of people. They're super engaging, dynamic, um, experts in their field, and great role models. And we have all their uh, many of their bios up on our website um, if you want to take a look. All of our instructors have at least a bachelor's degree, and many are pursuing advanced degrees or working in or working in fields in uh, similar to climate and health or climate and health. So they're great, and um, the students love working with them every year. Scott, pass it back to you. All right, thank you, Julian. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit more about the way that our, our week is structured. Um, so our theme this year is channeling climate action into climate solutions. Uh, so we, we recognize, uh, we're at this point in our history where we recognize that we have a big problem and there's a lot that we can do. So we wanna make sure that students understand that there are these opportunities and these climate solutions that are cropping up and that. Um, we want to encourage them to go into it. So that is our theme for the year. It runs from a Saturday to Saturday, July 20th to 27th. Um, and we're welcoming anyone from grades 9 through 12. And Julian touched on this briefly, but the way that it works with um, every student comes in and picks an action focus group. That's the lens in which they view the content. So I mentioned some of the speakers that they might hear from. Um, all of uh, their speakers are tailored to their action focus group. So the Climate Communication Press and Media Group will hear from uh, the meteorologists, on-camera meteorologists and other climate communicators, as well as keynotes as um, throughout the day. But these are action focus groups. Um, and so every student is asked to pick one of them. Um, climate Communication Press and Media is one, Climate Science, Entertainment, um, or excuse me, Entrepreneurship, Industry and Technology, Environmental Justice, Global Health, Epidemiology and Infectious Disease, Medicine and Healthcare, and Policy and Advocacy. And throughout the week, uh, the students hear from speakers, they go on excursions, they have lots of different activities. Um, and at the end of the week, um, they present what we call a community action plan. So this is the project that they're working on throughout the week, which we hope is uh, a project that they will then bring back into their community. So they find something that they're interested in, um, they put together, they work on it throughout the week, and then they present it on the final day. And uh, as I mentioned, there's also like wonderful activities that the students get to do throughout the week. Um, we can't keep them all stuck into a classroom for the whole time. So uh, we do excursions like to the Museum of Science, uh, the M New England Aquarium, um, or something or whatever their uh, instructor deems uh, appropriate for that group. Um, and they get to use the Harvard campus as their playground, um, as well as the city of Boston. 
We do, um, we are located on the other side of the Charles River from the main Harvard quad. Um, so we do take a specific day out of the week to go over to the main um, Harvard campus to explore um, and get a tour. And that gives um, the students an opportunity to see the, the old traditional um, campus, which unfortunately we're not located right on. We are uh, part of the medical community, which is um, located in Boston with all of the other hospitals. But this is a great opportunity for to get the vibe of Harvard, get the swag, um, and get inspired to join. Um, it, during the evening, we have uh, activities for the students like yoga. Um, and I mentioned that uh, we will be visiting various different museums throughout the city of Boston um, throughout the week. We also uh, love to do activities like kayaking on the Charles. So that is worked into the program as well as a tour of Boston, of Cambridge and of Harvard Square. So with that, I believe I will pass it back to you, Julian, to talk about the application process. Thanks, Guy. So uh, you can find all the details on our website. If you go to goputney.com, uh, you can scroll down and you'll find the, the Harvard Chan Sea Change Youth Summit listed as one of our pre-college programs. Um, but you can start the application process online. It consists of a personal statement written by the student applying. Um, we ask for two teacher references and a deposit to hold a space on the program. Uh, but once all that has been submitted and looks good, we just want to make sure students are a really good fit for this experience. Um, students are, you know, if you're accepted, you get access to what we call a digital locker, which has all kinds of travel information, packing lists, uh, and everything else that you need to know before you um, come to Boston this summer. Uh, we also have a scholarship program available with partial and full funding available for qualifying students. Um, and you can call us here at our office at Putney Student Travel. Uh, the number and the website are down here on the slide. Uh, anytime, just ask for me, Julian. I'm happy to chat with you about scholarships, about the program, about content, about guest speakers, the schedule, anything you want to chat about, um, I'm here. And Sky and I are working hard on this all year long. We're really excited for this summer to um, unfold. If anybody has any questions you haven't put into the Q&A yet, uh, now would be a great time. Pete, if you want to say uh, a few final words, that would be great. And then I well, think thank we'll you, Star, and thank up. you, Julian. That was fantastic, and it gave a great sense of the program. Um, listen, one of the joys of my summer is to be a part of this program. It brings, you know, the obvious question is Julian talked about the admissions process. Students are sitting there wondering, well, what are the students like? You know, who's there? Who am I getting involved with? Students often think. If I come alone, which by the way, 99.9% .9 of the students do not come with anybody they know. Students are selected from all over the country, different backgrounds, different interests. You know, will, will I make friends? Will anybody like me? Will I like them? All I can tell you is because students have a common passion for, they might be very different interests. Some might be interested in entrepreneurship. Some might be interested in health. Some might be interested in activism. Some might be interested in media and communications. Some might just be interested in the science of climate. Whatever it is, what you find is a like-minded group of students who are incredibly passionate, who tend to be leaders because this program accepts students who are not only passionate, but smart and willing to make a difference. And the group of students, I mean, Julian and Sky did a great job of talking about the faculty about the guest lecturers, about the people from Harvard that come in and make this so magical. But I cannot emphasize enough the students. We hear years later from students who connected at this program, who stay in touch, stay involved, not only make a difference back in their home communities with the knowledge they have, more importantly, stick together as we approach this challenge. So you will make incredibly close friends. It's tiring, it's exhausting, it's a packed schedule. But the people that you meet will be some of the closest social contacts that you've made because you share a common passion. Now, I just want to close by saying a word about passion. Listen, we can't get enough of it. We all know that if weather effects, I'm just reading about what's happening in California today, 
I'm speaking from you to you right now as a big skier from Vermont, we will tell you that for the third winter in a row, we just do not have the snow. It's February and it's just not happening. We used to get tons and tons of snow. Now we get tons and tons of ice and rain, a warmer climate, a warmer place to live. It has all kinds of ramifications for all of us. The point is we know that what we're feeling now is a teeny little harbinger of what lies ahead because we know that it's the carbon from 20 and 30 years ago that we're feeling now. It's the carbon that we've been being emitting for the last 20 or 30 years that we're gonna feel 20 or 30 years from now. So the challenge is huge. This is gonna be the biggest challenge in my view faced by humankind. There's huge opportunity, it's solvable, but it's gonna take everybody making a difference. What you will take from this summit is the passion, new knowledge, a new appreciation of how you can make a difference and a group of common peers that want to do it with you. So if you're interested in a really extraordinary week of this summer. This is it. Apply, we'll review your applications. If you're accepted, it's going to be an extraordinary experience. And I'll close by saying, call us anytime. I love talking about this program. Julian loves talking about this program. We'll talk about it until you're blue in the face. Answer all your questions. Don't be shy, but uh, get moving because space is tight. So thank you for joining this webinar. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Sky. Call us anytime. And we hope that we'll see you at this summit this summer. Thank you.